I already turned off alerts, okay? I'm like a genius. I'm an effing genius these days. Why it's necessary to shoot yourself in the foot. Without shooting yourself in the foot, learning lacks motivation. Complexity without reason is really confusing. I'm very excited about this. This is my big worry about AI. This is my big worry about chat GPT. This is my big worry about a lot of a lot of these future texts, which is, okay, I'm gonna give you my hypothesis of the world, so I hope you're ready, which is that experts who use AI will become even more experts. Novices who use AI will remain novices. I think the only thing these AI things will do is make the gap, the moat wider on experts. It's not gonna make it smaller. That's my personal opinion because one of the biggest ways you become an expert is by doing something wrong and doing it over and over again. And you have to do it wrong enough times that you see the right way to do something. If you don't know how these things work, if you don't have the deep understanding, you start, you slowly lose it. It's harder to bridge that gap. And the gap just gets wider and wider. That's like, it's one of the reasons why I have a problem with all the abstraction that we do today in modern web development is that it's really good. It makes really amazing things. And it's awesome that I don't have to think about deployment and all this kind of stuff. And there's a lot of cool stuff about serverless that I really, really like, blah, 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 blah. But in the end, at the end of the day, if you don't know how it works, that moat is wide. Do you need to know how it works? No, you can be successful without ever knowing how it works, but you will always have this huge knowledge gap, which costs, right? It always will cost when a problem comes up, right? It just does. The way I think I like this. The level of novices will increase, though. They will be able to solve problems they could not before. But improving this uh, approach is hard. But that's the problem is if you solve levels you are not meant to solve at your skill level, you may be able to solve it. But what is your debug time? Do you rely on the same tool that produced the buggy code to learn how to solve it? And then you're just you're never doing that exercise. You know how many like you know how much intuition I've built up from just debugging? Right? I can see something that's gone wrong. I can think of an error. I can put one or two print statements and I can determine what happened to an entire system because I just have such a good intuition about it because of years of debugging. Anyways, I hope that this is what this article is about. I really do hope that this is what this is. You know what I mean? Uh, at the Recurse Center, February 2020, I watched a talk during present, let's see, I watched a talk during presentations about someone optimizing a database engine. It was really complicated, and I remember nothing about the talk itself. What I do remember is thinking to myself, this seems really complicated for no good reason. Keep in mind, I had never made a web application at the time, and when I needed to store data, I just used a CSV file or a Python pickle file on the disk. This is a great recognition of your own shortcomings. I thought a file system was sufficient for storing data. Fast forward a few months, I'm building my first web application. I don't remember what it was for, but I remember using a CSV file as a database. I had to load the file into memory every time I wanted to look up something, uh, look something up, and it was a big pain. I now understood why using a database is, and sometimes a good idea. This is also me. This is me learning. This is me learning to a T, which is that. Like for me to discover something is good or to discover something is bad has almost universally always been me doing something that should not have been done a certain way. And I learn why it is. Whereas if I just read why you should do something optimized, it doesn't like set into my heart. Do you understand? Like it doesn't mean the same thing if I don't under I don't understand the the principles behind it. You know what I mean? I feel personally called out. <laughs> Yeah. Learning Rust, July 2020. I started learning about the borrow checker. It prevents you from keeping a pointer to an item of a vector. Yep. If you pass the vector as a mute. I don't really get why this is necessary. I have never done low-level programming before. I have never used pointers. And now I'm being told that following the borrow checker is safe. It's still very confusing to me. This is this is great. This is great. Fast forward when I'm... Hey, if you're following me and I'm causing you to learn Zig and Rust, I'm very sorry. Uh, fast forward to when I'm writing Zig code. I take array list item, append it to array list, and then I try to write uh, to the stored pointer. I get a seg fault. Ah, now I get the problem Rust solves. I love this. This is such a good article. This is exactly what so many people need to have. And it's one of the problems why if you don't ever do C, I feel like some of the things that are really nice about Zig are lost on you, right? If you've never done, uh, you know, certain languages, it's just you, you, your brain can't think in a certain way until it sees a different perspective. It's very interesting. Learning View, July 2020. Why are all those complicated ways to represent state? Shouldn't developing a web app, uh, app be simpler than this? 
After writing a bunch of vanilla JS, I can see why these frameworks could be useful. I could never made a very big web app, but I could see that keeping track of state and what is or isn't rendered is hard, and it gets much harder with a bigger web app. Absolutely. Uh, to fully understand a best practice or why something is necessary, it's important to experience how things go wrong without it. Yes! Uh, when teaching programming, we should let people make these mistakes and then show them the tools to correct them. Absolutely. This is why, like, this is why one of my big things is, is that go to Advent of Code, learn a new language, learn just a little bit about the language, just enough to solve one problem, and then try to solve the next problem with just your little bit of knowledge. And you're going to run into all these weird things. You're going to do a whole bunch of weird stuff. And you're going to be like, man, this is difficult to do this. I can't express that. Oh, I don't really like this. Oh, man, oh, camel kind of sucks for these reasons. And then you go and read the docs for a second and go, whoa, look at that. I love this. I love that. Oh, my goodness. And then you go back and you solve that problem that you just kind of struggled on. And it's like instantly easy and instead of understanding here you understand here and that's like the big difference that's what makes a really great programmer is when you understand it in the heart right you understand it at a fundamental level that's just different than going oh you should always use enums because they are heterogeneous right understanding in the nipples right in the nipples just giving someone a complicated tool without a salient reason to explain its complexity will just make them really confused some opinions you should store stuff in csv files before using uh before using a database you should learn zig or c before you learn rust you should write a web app in vanilla js before you learn a framework you should write a game from scratch before using unity you should use java c from the command line before using an ide these are actually really these i mean i say a lot of very similar things a lot of various, I may not say Java C because I, I, I don't recommend using Java, but use Vim, right? Learn how your thing works. Learn how your environment works. Then go back to the IDE if you want to. Totally cool. Know what said, awk, and JQ do. Learn grep, xargs, parallel. Learn just a couple of them because a, like parallel is one of the greatest tools ever. And if you don't know parallel, you're an ignorant slut. Like it, you have no idea how good parallel is. It solves an incredible amount of your things that suck. Like, it just an incredible amount of things. Uh, anyways, if you had an experience like this, email the, email this guy right here. Uh, dude, that is such a bold statement to put your email out. But, hey, I love it, Jacob. This was an amazing article. This was perfectly written. It was, it was right to the point. And it really just shows how someone learns. Doing the wrong thing. Doing the right thing at the right scale until that scale changes or the problem changes can instantly become the wrong thing, and you will know why, and you'll understand deep down why it's wrong. Love it. Examples on why use parallel? Okay, here's an example for you. I have a, uh, I have a program that has to go fetch data, and I can't do massive joins. Like I have to use like a REST API to go get a bunch of stuff, and it's just not available for me to do it. And, so I, and I have a, a max number of parallel requests one can make. And so what I did is I created a program that reads in from the standard in. Every single line that comes in is a JSON object. It decodes the objects, builds out the query, sends it out to the REST API. And now I can say, hey, parallel, give me four running parallels and run them all together. Then all the output goes to the next file. So I can stage all my changes. So that way it's running as efficiently as possible. And I don't write some stupid multi-threaded application. I write the world's dumbest script to go and get this thing done. And it just does everything for me. Now, the nice part is with, with uh, GNU, GNU Parallel is you can do the same thing, except for if you're doing something with the file system, you're doing searching, you're doing replacing, you're going through big files, you're doing JQ, you're doing whatever you want to do. You can make it parallel and then make all the output join back together on standard in or standard out. It's beautiful. It's truly a great, it's a, it's a great design. GNU Parallel. It's very, very good. But it's one of these things that you don't know you need it until you know you need it. I'm over here. I'm over here writing these really, really complex, dumb articles, or I mean, these dumb scripts that are like multi-threaded and doing stuff. And that's not what I want to do, right? I want to write a simple script and then have something that is designed to do it for me, right? It's glorious. The name is. I do appreciate some aspects of the Unix philosophy, Jen. <laughs> 